times science takes cues from the animal world or a natural world and naturally we're going to want to look at the octopus which is at times squishy but other times firm and muscular and able to squish into places that it normally wouldn't in this non-squishable state. Well, what I'm saying is it's a really malleable uh, form and it's something we may want to replicate in our world as we're creating more robotics and we have with this new material that's partially polyurethane partially wax um, at times it is more pliant and other times it is more firm and hard other times uh, it, it, it's, a, it's activated by electricity let's take a look at a video we wanted to develop tunable stiffness structures and materials and the idea is that the robot should be soft in situations where we want to conform to the environment so what you're looking at here is a soft scaffold of foam that's been coated in wax and when the wax is heated you get the soft structure and when the wax is resolidifies it regains its rigidity you can have different segments of the foam coated in wax and selectively change the stiffness of them. So this robot can be gentle at times and also be more rigid and be able to be uh, mobile. And this is a great use for medical purposes, maybe for inside the human body, but also for disaster recovery. So if there's a collapsed structure, this robot made of this lattice-like material might be able to squeeze through locations that it wouldn't have been able to otherwise. It's it's really cool and a little bit terrifying because, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time thinking about the inevitable robot apocalypse, singularity, the robotocalypse. Yes, yeah. robotocalypse now. <laughs> um, no, but more importantly, this is, this is very cool, the ability for a robot to go from a, you know, we, we typically think of them as these rigid hard structures, but the fact that they'll be able to uh, mold themselves and squeeze through tighter spaces, especially for things like disaster relief, like mm -hmm. search and recovery after a natural disaster, that is tremendous. Or surgeries where they, you might not be able to go in physically, uh, with just like a surgeon might not be able to go in on their own, but they'd be able to navigate these tight spaces. So it's very cool, but at the same time, a little bit terrifying. It's not like T-1000 or not anything yet. like Not yet, not yet, but they've said like, listen, it melts, it reforms. Tell me that's not T-1000 <laughs> at its core. Come on. All the right, first so thing I thought of... I know what you're going to say. ...was the bat cape. Oh, thank you. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. It's like sometimes you want it to be flexible and way yeah. behind you, and then all of a sudden, boom, rigid, and you're like flying around. So Surely we're a step Robin. closer to that, yeah. and I appreciate that. But I mean, all the other applications sounds good. Sometimes you need that flexibility for the robot to be for the robot to be flaccid and be able to get into certain places. And then at times, erect when mm -hmm. you know turgid, when you need it to do the heavy lifting and the real work. You know. I'm going to murder you. Uh, anyway, love. back <laughs> on the topic. Yes, yes, obviously. Um, there are some sex robot implications here what that are nobody you talking thought about. about? Tim. Medical sex bots. Sure. <laughs> For medical purposes. Like that jack-off machine in China that we talked about recently. Mm -hmm. Is that the technical term for it? A little professionalism is all I ask for here, Ken. Jack yeah, off machine. I'm the bad one. I know what yeah. you're talking about. It's called a master bot. Okay. <laughs> master boshin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank God they have this brand new substance. Well, okay, yeah, we can think of it in that way, but we can also think of it like more different parts of the human body where we can be gentle at times and also like tough mofos other times and both are necessary especially when you're in a situation that is malleable and changing. I really like uh, in the article uh, they mentioned that the material is self-healing that it can you know it's it's its structure might get deformed but then once it cools down it can slowly regain its original form so that is that's really cool, especially for, you know, because we, we, we saw, as we saw in the video, the whole lattice structure was very intricate and looked pretty delicate. Mm -hmm. It was just destroyed by those quarters and then just popped right back up like a jack-in-the-box. Well, these materials, they're easily findable if they used. I think it was just polyurethane and wax, yeah. which you can buy at a craft store. So yeah. and maybe if they work on the materials used for this structure, it could be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. It does awaken one of my nightmares, though, from the movie Inner Space, where there's like <laughs> little soft things in your body and then they reform mm -hmm. while they're still inside you, and that's horrifying. Yes, no, this is inevitably how most of us uh, watching today will die but <laughs> it's at least nice to know 
how it's going to happen. Oh, yes. And yeah. knowing is half the battle. Exactly. Power is Great. Power. Sure. Right. That's Bacon. how we'll die or be rescued or have some medical help in the future. We don't know yet. What do you think of this uh, structure, this material, and the idea of making robots at times squishy and at times not so squishy powerful? Let us know below in the comments and please be sure to subscribe.